All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. We're talking about the Las Vegas Raiders in tonight's video. I don't know what it is. Aiden O'Connell just gets the worst rep in the NFL media world. Like He just gets terrible, terrible rep. They just judge him for beating Jarrett Stidham. They judge him for beating Tommy DeVito. They judge him for beating Easton Stick. Like, I'm sorry, Aiden O'Connell's not in charge of who, what quarterback he's going up against. Uh, I mean, that Kansas City Chiefs win was huge. You know, that's Patrick Mahomes, MVP, Super Bowl champion, multiple of both of them. Uh, I get it. He didn't really need to do much outside of the first quarter, but uh, people are freaking out about it. So I was reading this article here, Raiders quarterback competition. DVOA gives Aiden O'Connell game manager label. Now, I read that. Most people would read that as an insult. I read that as a compliment. I'm thinking in my head, Brock Bird, all right? Uh, but apparently there was an article here from Aaron Schatz, uh, I forget which website or company he's with, but he was just going through uh, some Raiders quarterback metrics, and here is what he had to say. O'Connell ranked 25th in DVOA and DYAR last season. He was above replacement level and out of the Zach Wilson danger zone of haplessness. It's conceivable that he could develop into a sturdy game manager. That said, he's dangerously immobile, was a fourth round afterthought in the 2023 draft class, and did his best work against staggering opponents helmed by Tommy DeVito, Easton Stick, and Jared Stidham. Um, so just for some background information, DVOA, defensive adjusted value over average, calculates a team's success based on the down and distance of each play during the season, then calculates how much more or less successful each team is compared to the league average. I think this metric is stupid. I think dorks are ruining sports, but we're going to talk about some things, uh, mainly the quarterback position, but we're going to talk about everything Raiders in tonight's video. But before we do, if you guys enjoy it, be sure to hit that like button, hit that sub button for daily Raiders content, along with daily NFL videos. Uh, Raiders fans, we can try to get this video to 100 likes. I'll greatly appreciate it. Uh, here is the final excerpt from his team. Minshew represents a worthy low bar for O'Connell to clear. If O'Connell cannot beat Minshew in camp or hold him off for very long, the Raiders will know not to waste their time, and Minshew will keep their offense semi-competitive with his jam band improvis improvisations. Uh, so, Garner Minshew, two-year contract, right? It's crazy because the training camp hasn't even begun for like 30 teams in the league pretty much every team uh preseason hasn't started the regular season hasn't started but i keep every mock draft i read every way too early 2025 mock draft i read has shadur sanders the quarterback for buffalo or buffalo the colorado buffaloes going to the raiders everyone is penciling in shadur sanders to las vegas next season now i just want to say real quick i think that would be sick i think that would be awesome but folks the only good thing this guy got right in that excerpt was, you know what? If Aiden O'Connell can't beat out Gardner Minshew, this season might be a wrap. And yes, Gardner Minshew can still probably lead this Raiders team to a 9-8 and season, 10-7 and season. But I'm thinking long term. I want to find my franchise QB. Now, the, the DVOA and the DYAR, I think all of this stuff is stupid. Uh, I really do. It reminds me actually a little bit of, sorry, I'm so sick. Uh, it reminds me a little bit of like baseball where like the, the amount of dudes hitting below the Mendoza line, 200, where they should be in triple A freaking baseball, uh, but they can hit home runs. It's just crazy. I know that might not make any sense if you don't watch baseball. I don't watch too much baseball, but it, all these leagues are just being bombarded by these dork nerdy stats. D-Y-A-R. I mean, I don't know what that does for me. And then you have the whole thing. I'll reread this excerpt here because I'm not trying to go at Aaron Schatz. That said, he's dangerously immobile. I don't think that's an issue at all. I'm thinking of Philip Rivers immediately in my head. Uh, was a fourth round afterthought in the 2023 draft. I think that's just like a random body that Aiden just caught. Um, and he did his best work against staggering opponents helmed by Tommy DeVito, Easton Stick, and Jared Stidham. And none of those dudes play defense. I mean, like, obviously all three of those guys are backup quarterbacks, but none of those three players are defensively oriented. They're all quarterbacks. They're all backup freaking quarterbacks. So I don't get why you can make fun of Aiden O'Connell just because of what quarterbacks he's going up against. Of, uh, But neither here nor there, folks. It is true. I, it, at least in my opinion. I've been saying this all summer. I'm not trying to freak out about it. I'm not trying to make it a big deal because I 
fully guarantee you Aiden O'Connell wins the deal, wins the job, starts the whole season. Now, if he's going to be the franchise quarterback, I think that's you know more of a long shot. But uh, I do think and hope we will get a full season, regular season starter of Aiden O'Connell. Now, one player that's going to really immensely help him out is not only the best wide receiver in the league in Devontae Adams, one of the best wide receiver twos in the league in Jacoby Myers, intriguing second-year players in Michael Mayer and Trey Tucker, um, OG veteran Michael Gallup getting picked up. It's going to be Brock Bowers. Now, he was the 13th pick in the draft. If there's any indication of how, like Brock Bowers, folks, go watch any post draft like where they redo the draft go watch any of them brock bowers is a top 10 pick in every single one of them um, i forget who it was i think it was greg olson was saying like yeah if it wasn't this historical quote-unquote quarterback draft class brock bowers the furthest he gets drafted is probably seven the hope here is that brock bowers the raiders just drafted a generational type of player a hall of fame and like First team all pro guy, several year pro bowler. The hope is you just got one of the best tight ends of this generation at Brock Bowers. And if there's any indication of people don't, people forgot about this or people just didn't really care, people were confused. I have the excerpt here. This is from ESPN. This is the first sentence. They do an analyst of every single draft pick from every single team. Here was the first sentence when they drafted Brock Bowers. What a strange first-round selection, especially considering tight end was addressed last season with the second-round selection of Mike Mayer. I think that's just a good indicator of, you know, Brock Bowers he can line up in the backfield, he can line up in the slot, he can be a wide receiver. Like, Brock Bowers is a do-it-your-all prospect. Um, he's 6'4", 240. Like, he's just built more like a wide receiver than just like this huge tight end. Michael Mayer, 6'4", 265. Uh, this is going to be one of the best tight end tandems in the league. You know, Aaron Hernandez, Rob Gronkowski. Um, and Michael Mayer still had a decent rookie season for a tight end, especially in the Jimmy Garoppolo offense. That was the first half of the season. Like, you know, 27 catches, 304 yards, two touchdowns, and only 14 games. He missed the last three with an injured foot. Um if you're a Raiders fan and you know how the first half of the season went, you know that like statistics last year really didn't matter because the first half, like it took them, a, it took them like two months to score over 20 points. Like it took Josh McDaniels, Jimmy Garoppolo, like two months to score over 20 points in 2024. So I don't care about stats last year. Trey Tucker, Michael Mayer, I'm extremely excited about them this upcoming season. But Brock Bowers is probably going to be one of the best tight ends in the NFL for a very long time, and it's probably going to start right away. So I think Aiden O'Connell wins the job, and I think they win 10 games. I'll, I'll just say it. That's it for me. Hit that like button. Hit that sub button. We'll see you at training camp, and thank you guys for watching. But most importantly, first off, have a good weekend. Let me know how many wins will the Raiders have this upcoming season.